word of God. Romans 13 verse 14. Father, I give you praise. Romans 13 verse 14. But put ye on Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the loss thereof. Can we read it together as a family? One, two, three, go. Hallelujah. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Squeeze somebody's hands and let's pray. Holy Spirit, this is your moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated in God's awesome presence. Your love is kind. Your love is patient. You fill my heart with so much peace and joy. Your You make my life feel brand And your promises are yes And amen You're not a man you never Woo. Jesus, you love me too much Jesus, you love me too much, oh. Too much, oh. Too much, oh. Excess love, oh. Yahweh is kind. Jesus is perfect. He fills my life with so much peace and joy. Woo! He is amazing, amazing, amazing. He makes my life feel brand new. And his promises are oh, And amen He's not a man He will never lie Jesus I love you so much oh. So much oh, So much oh, love, oh. One of the greatest dilemmas of the Christian faith is that when they look at the Word of God they cannot associate it to the realities of their life because there could be so much contradiction between the truth of God's Word and the experience of our lives so it becomes a dilemma in the mind of a believer because how do I associate what God has promised me with the experiences I'm going through it becomes the greatest concern that when the preacher says that I'm blessed, I want to truly know that I'm blessed. I don't just want to imagine it. I want to know. I want to experience it. How do I experience the reality of God's word in my own personal space? That when I go through challenges, I could surely say that the word of God is true. 
this becomes the greatest conflict in the mind of every believer it is the greatest challenge that when you follow christ you want to be you want to be sure of a certainty that everything he has said for you in the word is true it's a conflict in our hearts it's a conflict even though we don't express it it's still a conflict in our hearts that sometimes we come to church sitting down and saying i believe lord but help down my own belief and the problem is a lot of believers do not know that there are two sides to the truth two sides the truth has two sides there's actual truth what God has already done for you then there's effectual truth what you acknowledge that God has done for you and it becomes a reality in your life this is powerful because a lot of believers are not aware of this that there's an actual truth that this truth is done but it might not be manifested in your life and when it is manifested, it becomes an effectual truth. Ooh. John 3.16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. This is true. Jesus did not die for me and you alone. He died for the world. So, the world, their sins are forgiven. is an actual truth. Actually, it's forgiven. All of the world, Jesus did not die for me and you alone. Everybody, everybody in the world, their sins are forgiven. But you see, that's an actual truth. It is not effective in their life until Romans 10 verse 9 comes into play. The Bible says, with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. Verse 10. It says, but with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. That becomes an effectual truth. Truly, Jesus has died for everybody. Actually, that's true. That's legally right for everyone walking upon the face of the earth. So when we go to them, we're not going to tell them God is going to forgive your sins. God has already forgiven your sins. But it does not become effectual until they believe in their heart and confess with their mouth. Somebody say amen. amen. The Bible says by his stripes you... I'm, I'm, I'm glad. Now your healing has already been paid for. By his stripes ye were healed. But you see that's an actual truth. The Bible says, is anyone sick amongst you? So there's, God also knows that there are some believers that will not experience that actual truth in their life. He said, let them call for the elders. The Bible says, you shall lay your hands on the sick. It becomes effectual. Praise the name of the Lord. When you acknowledge the truth in your heart and you begin to make manifest of that truth with your lips, the reality of his actual truth becomes effectual in your own life. Somebody say amen. amen. Let's look at Philemon. 1 verse 6. This is powerful. This is very powerful. He says that the communication of thy faith may become what? Effectual. By the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Every good thing is in you. But you have to acknowledge. Acknowledge. You acknowledge it, then you make it what? Effectual. Effectual. One truth is legally right, the other one is virtually right. And as from today, every truth in God's word that is yours, you will not only tell the story, you will also experience it. Oh, I wish your amen had some juice in it. The depth of every truth brings about the depth of your faith because faith is in levels and as your faith grows by the truth what happens is that you begin to experience more of his light in your life 
So every time the truth is being preached, your faith grows. So the Bible says, faith cometh, faith cometh. Faith never stays, faith is never still. Faith is always operational in the comet level. It's always coming. So you can't store faith. You can't use the faith of last year for this year. Faith cannot be stored. The Bible says faith cometh. It, it's always jogging. This is how faith operates. That is why you must always come for service. To stir up your faith for the next level, the next challenge, the next mountain. Levels in faith. The first level of faith when the word is being preached to you is that you agree. You agree with it. The next level is that you believe. You believe in it. But there's that higher dimension of faith. It's called conviction. It's a different dimension of faith. Listen, you can believe in something. Then later on, life can shake you and you begin to doubt. But when you have conviction, even while you are sleeping, your faith is working. That is the level God wants us to get into. Conviction. The Bible says he was not weak in faith, but he was what? Strong in faith, giving glory to God. So there's weak faith, there's strong faith. They said, Jesus said to them, oh ye of what? Of little faith. So when the truth of God comes to you, he wants to bring you into that dimension of solid faith. That is why Paul says, I know in whom I believe and I am persuaded. It's a persuasion in his spirit. It's a conviction. And this conviction affects everything you do. It affects the kind of songs that you sing. It affects the kind of words that come out of your mouth. It affects the kind of association you make. It is the conviction of the truth of the spirit. Listen, listen. Everything that God has done is in the realms of the spirit. It takes conviction to walk in it. You can't just, you can't experience it with your natural senses. So the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sensory perception. So your sensory perception is a lie. The truth is in the spirit. It takes conviction to bring it out the bible says he considered not his own physical body now dead and even the deadness of sarah's womb but he was strong in faith giving glory to god it's a death in god it affects everything you do i i remember the last time i was speaking here i said there are some songs we should not sing like every living soul praise the lord we are not living souls or we sing songs they might sound good but they are not true so sometimes when people sing it i just keep quiet because i have a higher conviction of it like these are the days of elijah these are not the days of elijah these are not the days of elijah these are not the days of Moses. These are not the days of David. These are my days and your days. These are not the days of David. These are not the days of Daniel. These are not the days of Elijah. These are my days and your day. These are my days and your day. These are my days and your days. I'm aware. The Bible says that. John the Baptist was the greatest of all of them prophets. Then he said, He that is born of the Spirit is greater than John the Baptist. That's a conviction I have. I know I'm greater than Elijah, Elisha. It doesn't matter what they did in the scriptures. I'm greater than them all. Jesus said to me, he said to me, I read it in his words. He said, greater work shall ye do than this. He said that I have the opportunity to do greater works. How can I compare myself to men of the Old Testament? 
I have a conviction in my spirit. There is never a time I preach the gospel and I never operate in the power of the Holy Ghost. Paul said, I do not come with the enticing words of men's wisdom. If I stand in front of you, there has to be a demonstration of power and of spirit. These are the dimensions of the Holy Ghost. We are the ones that are rising from the ashes of life and we are bringing about the manifestation of the Spirit. We are not ordinary men. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not in yards. It's not in talk. It's the power and demonstration of the Spirit that is rising from our generation. Wherever I go, the angels of the Lord walk with me. They walk beside me. You might be looking at me like flesh and blood, but the Bible says, let no man know me after the flesh. For I bear upon my bodies the mark of my Lord and my personal Savior. Who am I preaching to this Sunday morning? into an environment and heaven will not follow me I bring heaven with me it's a conviction so I'm not going to sing some ordinary songs that, not, that does not reveal the glory of God in me If your presence is an ocean, Lord, I want to be drowning you. I don't know. If your presence is a substance, Lord, I want to be overdosed. I don't know. Because I'm tired of the uncle experience. I'm tired of the knee experience. I'm tired of the uncle experience. Hey! I'm tired of the knee experience. I'm tired of the loins experience. Overflow. I'm tired of the ankle experience. If your presence is a substance, Lord, I want to be overdosed. I don't know, because I'm tired of the uncle experience. Please sit down, please. I'm tired of the knee experience. So I'm continuing with the thoughts of the conference. That's why I'm speaking like this. I don't want to share what I want to share with you is I am intentionally positioned for impact. Because positioning is very important extremely important understanding the realities of your position the position of your heart my heart is not positioned on physical things the Bible says why we look not at the things that are seen sorry sometimes I might not be able to wait for the scriptures but you buy the message <laughs> and study amen because there are moments where you stand on the podium and scriptures just flow into you like cars on the runway. And I cannot control it. Amen. So the Bible says we look not at the things that are seen. Because positioning in your life is extremely important. Very important. That's why we, we tell our children, what position did you get in school? Yeah? It's extremely important. When I was flying down here, a, a beloved senator of our country was sitting on my seat. Even though he was the senator, I said, excuse me, sir. <laughs> you are sitting in my position. <laughs> he says, oh, what's your number? I said, one C, sir. He said, oh, sorry. 
so positioning matters matters a lot somebody say amen. amen so also position of birth matters in the kingdom of God it matters this is very important so in the culture of God the firstborn should take two-thirds of every inheritance very important is God's culture Deuteronomy 21 verse 15 the firstborn should always take two-thirds of every promise of every inheritance look at if a man have two wives one beloved and the other hated and they have borne him children both the beloved and the hated if the firstborn son be has that was hated 16 then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he had that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated which is indeed the firstborn now verse 17 now says something very profound but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he had what that means is if the father has three cars two of the cars will go to the firstborn and the one car left all the other children because of the positioning of his birth because of the positioning of his birth he is already entitled not his skill not his gift not his character his position this is deep <laughs> Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 Colossians verse 18 let's look at that scripture verse 18 Colossians 1 verse 18 and he and he is the head of the body the church who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead that in all things he might have what the preeminence so Jesus couldn't come as the second born no 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 because according to the culture of God his positioning will determine his inheritance automatically praise the name of the Lord so you and I have to consciously by our conviction understand because someone like me that is the last born of my family <laughs> I'm the last born of my mom and my dad when you see this truth you begin to wonder but God showing us in the scriptures especially listen to me the Old Testament speaks about only one man you, you we have to all understand this that the Old Testament is about one person and one person only if the New Testament is the book of Jesus Christ the Old Testament is the movie season one Genesis season two Exodus everybody was just acting about acting the story of Jesus Christ for instance for instance Adam was looking for his bride the bride is the church so God had to put Adam to sleep and he pulled out the church out of Adam that's the story of Jesus and it had to be from the side because the spear was spared deep at the side of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ you have to understand it's it's a hidden mystery the Bible calls it in Hebrews 10 verse 1 he calls it shadows silhouettes you might not be able to observe it clearly but you can know so God in the entire Old Testament began to show us that he acknowledges firstborn not by faith but by not by birth but by positioning 
somebody say amen so if we go down to genesis 24 where a father is blind named isaac representing god meaning that when the sons come he's not going to judge them by their character because he cannot see but he says i need one of my sons to give me a food that i will release a blessing upon his life so esau now who is entitled to the firstborn throne because uh, actually actually by truth the firstborn responsibility has already been transferred to jacob but the father was not aware of it is an actual truth how do i know esau died the day he ate the porridge because the porridge represented his death he said give me this porridge or else i die so it is death or porridge so the moment he took the porridge he signed his death warrant now jacob automatically takes the second position and now the second position becomes the first position and now because he's the first position now he has to effectually put himself in the right position to take his actual truth is somebody listening to me this sunday morning so rebecca now representing the holy spirit because it is only the holy spirit that knows what to cook for the father oh, she now cooks the right meal for Jacob to take to the father and now Jacob cannot come as Jacob if he ever approached the father as who he is he's going to be disqualified the father never judges by sight but he judges by the touch of love so she said to him I need you to take the skin of the slayed lamp and put it on your body so that when you approach the father what he feels is the body of the lamp and we all know that Jesus is the lamp that was slain from the foundations of the world so in Genesis 27 when they got to the father he said who art thou and he said look at it. and he came unto his father and said my father and he said here I am who art thou my son and the Bible says and Jacob this looks like a contradiction said unto his father I am Esau thy firstborn I have done according to as thou biddest me when Jacob came how can somebody that is supplanting have an inheritance how can a 419 get a blessing but you have to understand that he was already the firstborn he had to position himself every time I approach my heavenly father I don't come in my own identity when he should ask me who art thou my son I say it is Jesus Christ your firstborn so I'm entitled to the inheritance I'm not going to come as a trickster because you see Jesus Christ is a garment that we wear so the Bible says put on the Lord Jesus and ladies and gentlemen he's one size fit all when you put on Jesus as a prostitute the father is still going to accept you when you put on Jesus as a trickster the father is still going to accept you when you put on Jesus as a bad boy as a nobody the father is still going to accept you so the Bible says let us all come boldly before the throne of grace we don't come as who we are we come as the son of the living God I don't approach the father with my voice he says wait 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 the voice that I hear is the voice of Pit Rock come a little bit closer let me touch you the moment he says that I go in with the garment of Jesus whenever the father feels me he doesn't feel my mistakes he doesn't feel my shortcomings he doesn't feel my idiosyncrasies he doesn't feel my past I don't care what you came to church with this Sunday morning but if you can approach the father by the name of his son Jesus Christ how many firstborns do we have in church the 
firstborn. I'm not the secondborn. I'm the firstborn. It doesn't matter what my position is in my biological family. That doesn't count. I now belong to another family, a family of faith. I position myself by faith. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Oh, things are passed away and behold all things have become new my identity I lost it in Christ my future I lost it in Christ my past I lost it in Christ I don't know who I'm preaching to this Sunday morning but if you can just put on Christ everything is going to work out for your good because the Bible says all things not some things the Bible says all things work together for good for all those that love God and are called according to his purpose if you're the firstborn in this church I don't want you to look around I want you to stand up on your feet and shout yeah yes I'm the firstborn I'm entitled to the inheritance don't count me out I'm entitled to this inheritance don't push me on the sidelines I'm entitled to this inheritance don't think I'm good for nothing I'm entitled to this inheritance Esau you know how to get your gift by your walks you call yourself a hunter but my name is Jacob I don't have to cook my food grace cooked it for me I'll just bring it to the father I don't approach the father by my hunting skills the Raise is not to the swift, the battle is not to the strong. Need a favor to men of skills, but the Bible says time and chance happen to the firstborn. I'm the firstborn. Somebody say, yeah. mm. If any man be in Christ. I need three seats. I need to show you some. Please sit down. We're only talking. Three seats. <laughs> if any man be in Christ, I be Christ, oh Christ, oh. I be Christ, oh Christ, oh. Your religious man is strongly with that song. I be Christ, oh Christ, oh. I be Christ, oh Christ, oh. Listen, if you don't look for me, I'm in heavenly places in my brother Jesus at the right hand of God. If you don't look for me, I'm in heavenly places with my brother Jesus at the right hand of God. If you don't look for me, I'm in heavenly places in my brother Jesus at the right hand of God. So I can say, I be Christ. I be Christ, oh. So, so God the Father, come. Represent God the Father, Pastor Vincent. Come, sit there. Pastor Flo, can I, you know. Thank you, sir. And this is God the Father sitting on his throne. And this is God the Son sitting with the Father. We are not sitting with Jesus. If we were all sitting with Jesus... That means there has to be another chair for us to sit. So probably the archbishop will sit here. Then the bishop will sit here. Then the most holy evangelist will now sit beside the bishop. Who now sits beside the archbishop? Who now sits beside Jesus? Who sits beside God? Then, the pastor will now sit beside the most holy evangelist that sits beside the bishop, that sits beside the archbishop, that sits beside Jesus, that sits beside God. Then the prophet will sit beside the pastor that sits beside the most holy evangelist, that sits beside the bishop, that sits beside... Now, just imagine all those people that have been born again and how our distance will be far away from the Father. 
But the Bible says we are seated in heavenly places in Christ. So this is what happens. God the Father is sitting here and I come and I sit in Jesus. When you come, you sit in Jesus. He is big enough to occupy all of us. So that when the Father is relating, He is only going to touch Jesus. And every time I send my prayers to Him, all He hears is the voice of Jesus. Now the Bible did not say we are just sitting in Him. He says we are seated in Christ far. sicknesses and disease, far above lack and poverty, far above pain and heartache, and seated far above, no satanic force has authority over my life, how many of you know that you are sitting far above? <laughs> Somebody say far, above, somebody say far, above, right now if there's any sickness in your body by the power of the Holy Ghost, because you're seated far above every infirmity, every disease, every heartache, every pain, every law court, every orchestration of men, every plans of the enemy, somebody shout far. You can't touch this. You can't come close to me. I'm hidden in his name. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Pit rock runs into it and he is safe. You cannot touch this. No accident can touch you. No cancer can touch you. No diabetes can touch you. No arthritis can touch you. Right now, I effectualize that truth in your body. Right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, somebody shout, yeah! Thank you. Thank you. Help me with the chairs. If you don't look for me, I mean places within my brother Jesus at the right hand of God position position so we all know that Abraham's firstborn is not Isaac is Ishmael We all know that Joseph is not Jacob's firstborn. We all know that David is not Jesse's firstborn. But grace and faith can bring you to that level. So the moment Abraham took Isaac to the altar, he became the firstborn from the dead. Because that day, Isaac truly died so he could displace Ishmael and two third of every inheritance including the earth belongs to those that are born of grace two third two third think of Nigeria think of Nigeria think of Nigeria two third of this nation belongs to the church The oil and gas belongs to us. The resources, we are the managers of the earth. Is it not written in your word, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof? If I am God's firstborn, why will the second Adam have a better inheritance than me? Somebody say, God forbid. You're taking over. We are the takeover generations, house on the rock. I said we are the takeover generation. I said we are the takeover generation. We have allowed Ishmael to ride on horses while we have been walking on the foot. But right now there's a change. A new transformation is taking up. We are the takeover generation. If that's you, shout yeah! Now, 
God did not make us firstborn. He didn't put us in a favored position so that we could just worship him. No, 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 sir. You don't use transformer to charge your phone. Or use caterpillar to trim your hair. Or have you used atomic bomb to fry egg? God cannot put so much power in us and all we just have to do is come to church and lift up holy hands and worship him. No, 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 no. Revelations 5 verse 10. He said, and we shall reign. And he has made us unto our kings, unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign. Where? In heaven. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. Romans chapter 5 verse 17. For if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in heaven. We have been intentionally positioned not so that we can only worship and praise and sing beautiful songs so that we can reign, make an impact upon the face of the earth. Somebody, you are leaving this house and you are going to make you are going to make an impact that will shake the foundations of this earth. I've been positioned for impact. I'm not the second born. I'm not the last born. I'm the first born of God. And any sphere I enter, I'm not entering there to beg. No, 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 no. Your songs will rain. So, from House on the Rock, we will sing the reigning songs. The leaders of this church will become the reigning leaders. We are taking over the entire foundations of the world. Let's look at my final scripture. I just have about a few minutes. How many of us have been blessed tonight? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse 8. Alagbara, you are the mighty God. Tobiju, you are the glorious one. Alagbara, you are the mighty God. Tobiju, you are the glorious God. Oh, my Jesus. You are the mighty God, and He let be true. You are the glorious God. You're a mighty God. You're a mighty God. You're a mighty God. You're a mighty God. You're a holy God. You're a holy God. You're a holy God. Oh, 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 oh. Mara. You are the mighty God. And He loves you. You are the glorious God. Allah Mara. Hey. You are the mighty God. Listen. You are the You are the mighty God, the great, the great Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him 60 seconds of praise. The great. Tremble. The Lord reign and let the earth tremble. Hallelujah. 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 
shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Judea Jerusalem Samaria and what that means your impact has no boundaries <laughs> lift up your hands everywhere da, 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 da. in the next 60 seconds I want to release the manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost over your life. That you're going to your world to make impact. Right here from this place. Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, select men for impact. Right now, let the Spirit of God move unhindered by any force. All over this room, right now, right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let there be a manifestation right now, right now, right now, by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Somebody right there, you're receiving an impactation right there, all over that room. Right there, an impactation of grace for impact, for impact, for impact, for impact. All over this section right now, Father, by the power of the Holy Spirit, let there be a mighty release for impact, for impact. Right here, right here in the choir. A fresh move of the Holy Ghost. Revival in your spirit. As you go around in life, you make impact. Impact your generation. We will rise in your name. Adonai, you reign on us. In your name, Jesus Christ, I reign with you. I reign with you. I 